Jangan lupa subscribe. Jangan lupa subscribe ya. Jangan lupa like dan subscribe. Di sekolah minggu Apa kabar semuanya? Dinda punya informasi penting nih Mulai sekarang Adik-adik tidak usah khawatir lagi Untuk memberi persembahan Adik-adik dapat mengumpulkannya Terlebih dulu di dalam celengan Nanti Pada waktu adik-adik sudah boleh ke gereja Celengannya jangan lupa dibawa ya Selamat hari minggu Tuhan Yesus memberkati First Baptist Bandung utilizes Chris for the congregation to give tithe and offering combined with any available mobile payment applications. Chris stands for Quick Response Code Indonesian Standard, which has been standardized by Bank Indonesia that uses QR code. Chris allows the congregation to give tithes and offerings anonymously. First Baptist Bandung's congregation is required to scan the QR code that is available. To specify the types of offerings, the congregation can press number 1 for tithe per sepuluhan, number 2 for offering, and number 3 for missions. Let us give with hearts filled with joy and thanksgiving to God. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's so good to have uh, all of you here to be able to join the English worship service, the online worship service uh, of First Baptist Church. We're so glad that you could join. If this is your first time uh, to join our channel, we welcome you and we're so glad that you are here uh, to join us and also for uh, returning uh, viewers and also faithful congregation of First Baptist Church. And wherever you are, whether you're in Bandung, maybe in Jakarta, or other place from Indonesia, or even from abroad, we're so glad that you could join and really continue to prepare our hearts, to open our hearts and our life uh, to be able to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we'd just like to remind you, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel or hit the notification button, uh, please do so, so that uh, we can stay engaged every day, because every day we have a digital content out uh, for devotion, uh, daily devotion, children devotion, uh, family devotion, and also a talk show uh, that we can accompany your, your lunch time. And so uh, please do, do that. And if you want to join a Bible study group, um, we, we, we encourage you to do so. And if you're not joining a Bible study group, there's a number on the screen or on the descri description of this video. Uh, you can uh, contact us at that number, and we'll make sure that you could join a group. There's a regular a Thursday night Bible study group that Brother Matt is hosting, uh, so please uh, join that also. And if you have any question or any prayer requests, any uh, requests for ministry, you could contact the number on the screen or on the description, and we'll make sure to uh, do that. Uh, friends, we also like to uh, announce and also remind you for our Titan offering. Uh, you could do so through a bank transfer to the church's bank account. The number is on the screen, and there's also a QR code. If you're living in Indonesia and you have a digital money, you could uh, scan the QR code, and it will help you uh, in doing that. And um, we're so glad uh, that you could join again, and let's come to the Lord in prayer as we prepare our hearts as we begin this worship service. Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful that you have redeemed us, that you have saved us, 
that because of what you have done on the cross, the salvation that we have received by faith alone, that we could gather together as your church, as your children, and as a family, we would like to unite our hearts, our minds, we unite in you alone. We want to express together through our praises, through our songs, through to, to our openness of our mind and our heart as we listen to your word and obey your word. We want to give all of who we are. We want to express our love and our faith uh, through this worship service. And please help us and guide us, Lord. Help us to concentrate on you alone so that you will receive uh, joy from what we do in this worship service and we bring glory to your name alone. This is our prayers, Lord. Please guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin our worship, Ellie. Good morning, brother and sister. Uh, let's we prepare our heart to worship our God. Uh, we will sing still because in Him we can find our rest. Hide me now under your wing. Cover me within your mighty hand. Oh 
Yes, Lord, I will be still because I know you are my God. I know who you are. I know your mighty hand. Let me find rest in you. Amen. Because we know our God is mighty God and he can turn our conditions into joyfulness. Let me sing this song. More morning into dancing. He turns my morning into dancing. Let me dance even if we in uh, our homes. Let me sing be joyful. And dancing because he the one who make joy in our heart. Let's we prepare our heart for the words of God. We will sing. My heavenly Father watches over me because we trust in God who always look over us.
the valley, maybe the, the shadows deep. joy it is that we could receive happiness in the Lord when we know that we have a heavenly father and that he watches over us that many people want to seek happiness in our life and before we begin our sermon I want to show you a video clip fun video. Yeah, we want to feel happy even though in the midst of uh, difficulties, right? People want that and the world seeks that. Christians seek that. Everybody seeks that because we want to feel good. We want to feel good even though there's many reasons we do not want, uh, we, we do not uh, feel good. But the question is how and where do we seek that happiness? How do we want to fulfill that feeling to be happy? How do we want or where do we go? Where do we go so that we can feel that happiness? And there's a question. It's a, it's a question that we have to answer. And does our answer matches to what the Word of God, what the Bible says, where or who our source of happiness is? Now, happiness and joy is very important. And especially in this time of uh, pandemic, you know, joy and happiness is very important because it's good for our health. It's good that uh, we feel happy because it promotes a healthier lifestyle. Also, it's a boost to our immune system and it fights stresses and pain and it supports longevity according to a study that I read earlier. Now friends, there's a difference between happiness and joy. And the difference is where is the source of that feeling? We might feel the same if we are happy or if we are joyful, we might feel the same. But the source is different. Happiness comes from an outside stimuli. So if we have an outside stimuli, we might we feel happy because of an outside. Something happened to us, something we receive, something we can do, we feel happy. But joy, we might feel the same, the same feeling. Joy comes from inside. The source is from inside. The source is not from what we can receive. The source is not from what we can see. The, the source is not what we receive. But the source of that feeling of joy is from the inside. So despite chaos, despite difficult situation, we still can feel happiness. And that's called joy. Because joy comes from inside fulfillment. Happiness comes from outside stimulus. Joy comes from inside fulfillment. So there's a big difference. And if we go and if we seek from outside stimulus, there's a danger of addiction. Whether it be substance abuse or whether it be experience 
or things. If we seek from outside, there's a danger of addiction. We need more and more, just like substance abuse. You know, we might have a small doses at first, and the more we are adjusted to that, we want more and more and more doses so that to feel the same level of happiness. Uh, there's a danger of that. So if our source of happiness or our source of joy is from the outside, there's a danger of addiction. Now, I'm reflecting on you know, why many people uh, feel stressed out uh, when this pandemic hits. Well, one reason that I can conclude is that many of us, you know, we can't receive our usual stimulant that we get, uh, we feel happy when we do something. You know, we cannot receive the outer stimulant that we have been relying on. Traveling, recreation, or culinary experience, or whatever we do to feel happy. You know, and we can't do that during the pandemic. And so when that happened, we are stressed out. And some of us are trying to seek new adventures. Some of us are trying to seek new stimulant. But when we do that, when we seek outside stimulant, we will feel tired, we will feel weary, we will feel empty. And maybe right now, we don't feel it yet, but if our source of happiness is from the outside, trust me, we will feel emptiness, tiredness, and weary. But friends, there's the good news. And the good news is that the Bible teaches us, gives us the answer, so we do not feel that emptiness, that tiredness, even though we seek to be happy, but that we might find eternal fulfillment that comes from inside, that we will feel that joy, the perfect joy that our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ could give. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for our time to be able to study your word. We ask for your wisdom. We ask that you could guide us. We pray, Lord, that we could understand, speak to us in a personal way, Lord, so that we can understand better of who we are in you, that we might feel joy that comes from you. So, Lord, we open ourselves to you, Lord. Please help us to understand. Please speak to us. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, if you have been following us the past month or all through this year, if you're our congregation, we're so glad that we could continue on our study. We are at the last part of Matthew chapter 11. And if you remember from last week, two weeks ago, you know, Jesus has been frustrated. Jesus has been frustrated because of the people that was around him, because of the unbelief. John the Baptist follower, disciples, they were unbelieving. The cities that experienced his miracles, they were unbelief. They did not believe that Jesus was Lord and Savior, God incarnate as man. They did not believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. So he was feeling a little angry. He was feeling a little frustrated. He was feeling a little sad. And that shows us that Jesus really has a heart, a deep burden for us as human. He wants to save us. And we will continue on when he wept for the cities that will be doomed because of their unbelief. And when Jesus is giving us a warning, we have seen the evidence is uh, plentiful in our life, but we still unbelieve. There's a warning that Jesus gives. But Jesus does not stop in weeping, but he gives us the solution. He tells us what to do. And that is what's important for us to understand that. So let's open our Bible. I invite you to open our Bible to Matthew chapter 11. We will read from verse 25 to verse 30, but we will stop at the three parts that we will look very, more closely from verse 25 through verse 30. So please open your Bible to Matthew 11. We will start at verse 25 through verse 27. Let me read for you. At that time, again, at that time, after Jesus gives all the warning to the people that unbelieved, the follower that was following him, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learn and reveal them to infants. Yes, Father, because this was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son desire to reveal him. 
Now, this is the first part. We learn a very important thing here. Jesus gives us uh, the solution, the answer, give us the example. When we are frustrated, when we are frustrated to ourselves, maybe, why do I have doubts? Why do I keep on uh, doubting Jesus? Why, why is it a hard time? I keep on failing what I want to do uh, when I want to do the Word of God. Why? When we are feeling frustrated, Jesus gives us an example. He prays. And Jesus here prays to the Father, God the Father, to show us that He is truly one with God. That He is truly divine. And so the first thing that we could learn here, in all the situation, in all the chaos, we can learn how to stop and pray. Pray and trust. When we confess, like Jesus confessed, that He is one with the Father, we trust in His sovereignty. Like the song that we uh, sang before this, Our Heavenly Father watches over us. And when we know our Heavenly Father watches over us, and we know that He knows our every need, He knows and He can see what we do, what we're feeling, what we're thinking, naturally we should come to Him, stop and pray. And why do we want to pray to God? Why do we want to do that? And when we do that, we trust Him. So because we, if we pray, we claim who He is. And it's a testimony to the people around us. It's a strengthening to ourself that He is our Lord and He is in charge. Let's continue on the second part in verse 20, 28. After praying to God, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Again, verse 28. Come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus gives us an invitation. Jesus gives his follower an invitation. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened. Many of us are weary, burdened. We are tired. And Jesus says, come to me. And Jesus said here, I will give you rest. And many people try to seek rest, to seek comfort in many different things that this world can offer. And again, that we talked earlier, it's like an addiction. Oh, this helps us feel good a little bit. This helps us feel good a little bit. I want more of this, more of that, more of this. But Jesus here says, and he gives an invitation to himself. And he says, come to me. Everybody, anybody who are feeling tired, who are feeling weary, who are feeling burdened, burdened that we continue to fail, we continue to de uh, desire, we continue to uh, have uh, wants or, or we continue to have needs that the world cannot fulfill. Jesus says, come to me, come to Jesus. So that's the second thing that we could learn is Jesus' invitation gives us rest. We will not receive the perfect rest unless we come to Jesus. Nothing that this world could offer could give rest. Only Jesus gives rest. The third part of this passage, verse 29. All of you, Jesus command, commanded, all of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is an action that Jesus wants us to take. As we acknowledge, as we pray, we acknowledge that Jesus and the Father are one. And the second part here, we come to Jesus because only He alone can give us rest, perfect rest, peace. Then the action that He wants us to take is, verse 29, all of you, Take up my yoke. That's the command. Take up my yoke and learn from me. That's the command that Jesus gives if we want our burden to be lifted. If we want to turn our sorrow into joy. We have to come to Jesus. And we have to take on his yoke. Why? Because he is hum gentle and humble in heart. And we will find rest for yourself. For his yoke, Jesus' yoke, and His burden is easy and is light. So the third thing that we could learn here, this is an instruction from Jesus. 
And His instruction is molding us to be like Him, to be more like Him. And there's one thing that we should notice here. It's a command that we should do. And so if we want to find rest, we have to come and we have to take. We have to come to Him and take His yoke. And we will receive rest and peace. Now, action is obedience. Do we want to obey the Lord or not? If we obey Him, we will receive what He has to offer. So friends, in the context that we see, in the midst of disbelief and doubt, that we should come to Jesus. Because Jesus is sovereign. His sovereignty is the only source of ability for His follower to obey Him. His follower was, that was doubting Him. Maybe some of us as Christians are doubting. You know, why do I keep on, why do I still suffer? Why do I still feel sad? Why do I still feel burdened? Why do I still feel a doubt? Maybe I read something or heard something. I doubt, is Jesus really Lord and Savior? Maybe there's doubt in you, like the follower of John the Baptist. And as Christian, we might have doubt. But we learn from this passage that Jesus' sovereignty is the only source of ability for us, for his follower, to obey and know him. So if you want to know Jesus, truly know Jesus, you want to learn how to become his obedient disciple, if you want to learn how to live as his children, we have to come to Jesus. And if you feel you're doubting, if you feel you are struggling, don't be afraid. You're not alone. And the answer is in Jesus. So friends, we have to trust. That's the key word. We have to trust in his sovereignty as we become his obedient follower in the midst of our daily struggle in the midst of our daily life, in the midst of our storm that we are facing, we can feel stillness. We can feel comfort. We can feel the protection, the ultimate peace, and it comes from Jesus. Now I want to dig a little deeper in that word, rest. In the, in the version of the Bible, uh, the Christian Standard Bible, the word is uses rest, and Jesus promised to give us rest. Now, in the Greek language, there's the root word of rest. It's called po'o, po'o, which we get the word pause. So rest does not mean we stop and we don't do something and we just stop and, and you know, do nothing. That's not rest. It's like hitting pause. When we're going along in our life, we're doing things, we're... We're, we're, we're working, we're working hard, we might feel tired. You rest, you pause, you hit the pause button. And when you play music, you hit the pause button, you're not going to stay in pause mode. You will want to press play again so that we can continue on. If we're watching video on YouTube, you know, we can go to the bathroom, hit pause, but we'll hit play again. We do not stop or we do not change the music or change the video. And so Jesus is saying this. If we come to him, he might not change our, our situation, but we might not change the challenges that we face. He might not take the challenges and the struggle that we face in our life, whether it be physical challenges, whether it be relationship challenges, psychological challenges. He might not take that away. But if we come to him, he will give us rest. He will give us pause, refreshing that we have the strength again that we can go on. And the dictionary, the Bible dictionary says that word anapo'o, which is pause, the root word is pause, to give rest, to give intermission from labor by implication, to be refreshed. So when we come to Jesus, we have the strength to continue in our challenge. We might not, Jesus might not take away the challenges that we are facing, but He will give us the strength, He will give us rest. And so, again, the rest that we can take so that we can go and do some more, and we can go and face difficult challenge that we can continue on. Now, it's interesting, in the passage, rest goes with yoke. 
And, you know, when you think about yoke, uh, there's a picture that we could show on the screen. Now, what is a yoke? Maybe some of you are not familiar with a yoke. Now, a yoke is this thing that you put in the ox. So you put two ox and you put the ox here. Yeah, and so if you want to plow the field, you could see in the middle, there's the yoke. The wooden thing is the yoke. And so what happened is that usually there are two ox that's being paired. The stronger ox will be paired with the younger or lesser experienced ox, a weaker ox. And then they would plow the field together. And the farmer will push the stronger ox, and the stronger ox will carry most of the burden, and the younger ox will learn from the bigger, stronger ox. And after a while, they learn, the smaller ox learn, he grew in strength, then he would do the same thing. They will switch again with the newer ox, and they will continue to do that. So that, uh, in, in essence, the more experienced ox is actually teaching the younger ox, the less experienced ox. And by doing that, the younger ox will gain experience and strength. And the audience where Matthew is writing this knows exactly what that means. When Jesus says to take up your yoke, many of us are thinking, oh, it's a burden. It's like a heavy cross that we have to carry. It's like a heavy yoke that we have to carry. But here in verse 29, Jesus says, For his yoke is easy. His yoke is light and easy. He said, Take up your yoke, take up my yoke, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart. And you, feel, you will find rest for yourself, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, friends, when you get this, it's wonderful what Jesus is telling us to do. When we pray and we recognize His sovereignty, He might not take away our yoke, our challenge. He might not take away our difficulties. But yet Jesus says, come to Him. Surrender and learn from Him. Walk with Him. He is the stronger ox. He is Lord Almighty. And so when we understand this, that Jesus is on the other side of the yoke, our burden will be easy. But if we do not understand this, we'll be fighting. We will be fighting Jesus. He wants to go that way. We want to go this way. We want to do His will our way. And we will struggle. And many of us struggle and find challenge because of that. His yoke is easy. Our burden is light. Only if we learn and surrender to Him. Because He is shouldering all the burden of our life. He is shouldering all of the burden of our life with His power. He is doing all the heavy work. He is doing the plowing. He is doing the impossible. He is the answering all the questions that we might have, that people might ask us. He is shouldering and caring, protecting us. He is burden, shouldering all the miracles of our life and and the wonderful news is, if only we would surrender, we get to go along with the ride. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus is steering. He's the bigger ox. He's the stronger ox. And we bound ourselves to Him. And we just go along with the ride. That we might experience His miracle. We might experience His power. We might experience, only if we get this, that we come and surrender. And when we surrender, we will feel refreshed and rested, even though we have to work hard in the field to plow. Friends, a few weeks ago, uh, I heard an a interview that was given uh, to Ahok. Many of us still remember Ahok. Ahok is the governor or the, uh, the, the ex-governor of Jakarta that was put in prison because of uh, some case that uh, were, were um, that uh, the judge uh, decided that he was guilty. 
And so Ahok was in prison for I think a year and a half or two years. And in the testimony, it reflects on what happened in his experience while in prison. And in the interview, when he was interviewed, he says this very interesting. I wrote it down and translated it, of course. He says this, he said, I am glad that I did time in prison for only then that I learned a very important lesson that I can't have everything I want my way. Again, let me repeat that. In prison, and only then, he learned a very important lesson. Ahok said, I can't have everything I want my way. Then he continues on to say, and only after I realize that, I can find relief, and I can accept what I am experiencing. Friends, that's a good reflection, isn't it? You know, our condition, including our spiritual condition, maybe we are frustrated because we want to be holy, we want to do good, but we keep on failing. We want to obey as his disciples, but we keep on failing. We want to witness, yes, but we keep on failing. We, might, we want to share Jesus with our friends, but we keep on failing. We feel like we are a failure. We feel we're not worthy of Jesus. Of course, we're not worthy, but He made us worthy because we have faith in Him and only in Him that we become worthy. Maybe we are feeling tired. Maybe we are, we are feeling pressured, weary, and burdened. But the solution is, if we come to Him, that means we acknowledge Him. And we go to Him and Him alone and do not seek worldly answer and if you want to feel rest in the situation that we are facing the challenges that we are facing we have to take action take on the yoke and submit under his authority rest does not mean we stop doing what we are doing it means pause it means peace and refresh in the midst of chaos in the midst of the storm, we can feel the stillness because God is with us. And so maybe some of us are even frustrated in trying to be an obedient follower of Jesus. Maybe some of us keep on having doubt. Maybe some of us are facing too much pressure in this life, too much changes because of this pandemic maybe. We have changes in our work in our family dynamics. Some of us maybe are frustrated because we're trying to pursue the world and all this pleasure, and we try to seek more and more and more, and we are not being satisfied. Maybe some of us are feeling that. To sum up the lesson for today, the word trust and obey. Is that what we have to understand? If we trust that Jesus is sovereign, that He is our Heavenly Father, we have to trust and obey, like the hymn says, for there's no other way. If you want to feel happiness, joy, rest in Jesus, there's no other way but to trust and obey. Friends, we have to do His will, His way. If not, we are and we will feel empty and frustrated. Friends, we see here, Jesus' desire is for us to feel joyful, to feel happy, because He says He wants to give us rest only and only if we surrender to Him. So, in closing, what can we conclude? We can learn that Jesus wants what's best for us, and with the knowledge that His perfect divine is sovereign, we should trust in Him completely as we come to Him and submit ourselves under His authority. We put the yoke submitting under His authority and only that will we find true happiness, which is joy from the fulfillment of being yoked together, trusting Jesus. So again, the solution, if we are feeling tired and weary, heavy burden. We have to pray to acknowledge His sovereignty, that He has a divine and perfect plan for us. We have to come to Jesus alone. Second thing is we have to come to Jesus alone. 
because He desires what is best for us. And to experience peace and rest, we have to take action, submit under His authority, to put on His yoke. So friends, are you feeling tired of wanting more? And that is doing His will our way. Find rest in full obedience under His delightful yoke because He wants what's best for us. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful. We are so thankful that despite our challenges of life, despite all the difficultness of life, despite of our, our feeling of tiredness, the heaviness that we feel in this life, that we could always come to you. And we want to feel rest that comes from you. We want to obey you and trust you as we become your follower, as we continue to live life in full obedience. We want to stop doing your will by our way. And we want to surrender to do your will, your way, so that we might continue to feel your presence. We might continue to feel your guidance because we want to be yoked by you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us the answer. Thank you for being the solution for our life. We want to fully trust in you. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we might experience you and feel you every day. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us to trust and obey and surrender in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, maybe some of you uh, are having question, or maybe some of you want to have more explanation of what we are studying today. Maybe some of you want to learn how you can trust fully in the Lord. Or there's some of you that are watching have not claim and have not put your trust in Jesus Christ. There's a number on the screen. Feel free to contact the number. It will be passed on to me and we'll be able to um, talk and discuss more. Do not continue to live our life being tired and weary. Come to Jesus. And if you want to know more, learn more, please contact the number on the screen. What a beautiful message that we know our God is give us rest. And I will read from Psalm 139.10. Even there you, your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. We know our God will hold our hand fast because He so loves us. He wants us to find rest in Him. Let me sing this song. He hold me fast.
it's over me inside of the yoke that you will hold us fast you'll not let us go whatever problem difficulties that we are facing whatever our concern and worries we know and we trust that you are God Almighty all sovereign that you have a perfect plan for us that you will hold us fast you will help us guide us protect us even though, Lord, that we will continue to face difficulties and struggle, but we can enjoy it because we are learning from you and we are surrendering in you. So, Lord, maybe some of us are having physical challenges and yet you allow us to face that, to grow us and to put our life to be used as a testimony. We trust you, Lord. We trust whatever we are facing. Maybe some of us are facing loss. Uh, maybe some of us are facing doubts. Maybe some of us are facing persecution, difficulties, worries, trouble. We trust that you will hold us fast, not let us go. That we will learn from you as you continue to shape us and mold us, Lord. Lord, we want to continue to surrender to you. So that our life will be filled with joy, knowing that you are always with us and in us, Lord, that you always guide us and use us. And so, Lord, we surrender fully to you. We pray that everything that we do is a reflection of our love for you. It's a reflection of what we can give back to you as you have redeemed us, you have saved us and cleansed us because of you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to gather together in worship, to praise and sing to you, to give our praises to you, and to have an open mind and a heart to be molded and shaped. We want to fully obey you, and we want to continue to walk in your will, doing it your way. We surrender our future to you. We surrender each step that we take. We surrender all of who we are to you, Lord. We pray that our life will be used for your glory alone, because to you be the glory forever and ever. And church, this is the command that Jesus has commissioned us with. Jesus said that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the ages. Amen. Amen. 
And friends, I pray that our worship experience was a wonderful one. It's always a joy that we could gather together in fellowship and be united in the Lord. So I would like to again welcome you. If this is the first time that you have seen our video, I pray that uh, God was lifted up. It's only Him alone that was glorified, that you could feel the connection and worshiping together. I would like to uh, ask that you could continue to follow us and uh, be able to um, interact with us because we have a daily uh, content that we put out uh, in YouTube and you could follow us there also. So I would like to also remind you as part of our uh, worship service, we could give our tithe and offering uh, via bank transfer or also scan the QR code. You can need to support our missions ministry. We are so glad that all of our uh, branch churches and also our mission point is doing well. Of course, struggling. There's dif different struggles, different challenges that they are facing, but everyone is doing well uh, by God's perfect uh, providence, of course. And we're so glad that we could be used uh, in doing uh, His work um, in all over uh, Indonesia. So I would like to encourage you, if you have not joined our small groups, uh, please do so. If you have any questions, there's a number on the screen and in the description of this video. Please contact us uh, for any ministry, for any uh, sh uh, sharing testimony that you want to share with us. Uh, please contact that if you have more questions also about uh, the church, about uh, what we have talked about in this worship service, the sermon. Uh, please contact that number. Thank you again for joining us. Have a blessed day and see you next week. God bless.